Welcome to our lecture online. This morning, one of our viewers asked an interesting question about relative velocities. And since I thought it was such a unique question, I thought, hey, why not do a video, make a video on that. And so here it is, this is the video. So let's read the problem together and try to figure out how we should solve this problem. It deals with an airplane flying in a particular direction or trying to fly, fly in a particular direction with the wind coming from a non-perpendicular direction. So an airplane flies horizontally at 80 meters per second in still air. If the aviator wishes to fly due south and the wind is blowing from the southeast at 30 meters per second, what is the direction of the pl that the plane, hmm, not a very good sentence, what is the direction the plane must fly and how long will the trip take if the destination is 200 kilometers south of the starting point? All right, so first let's get a feel of what this looks like. So this is the starting point, and I think I need a different pen here. Let's try that, and here's the finishing point. So start and finish. So let's make it a little darker, there we go. And we want to fly in this direction. So this would be the resultant of the motion of the plane. So the plane wants to fly due south, and we know that the distance is equal to 200 kilometers. Now a wind blows from the southeast. So if we draw compass directions, sometimes that helps to do that. So have north, south, east, and west. So if it comes from the southeast, then it blows towards the northwest like this at a 45 degree angle. So we can say that this would then be the velocity of the wind. And notice that the vectors represent the velocity. So this will be the velocity of the wind. This will be the resultant velocity. So let's write that down, velocity of the wind. This is the resultant velocity. And of course, these are vectors. And then we have the plane that needs to go from here to there. So ultimately, the plane wants to fly this way, but because of the wind, it's going to have to fly at an angle. So this becomes the velocity of the plane like this, velocity of the plane. So when we add the velocity of the wind to the velocity of the plane, these are vectors, then we get the resultant velocity, the plane will fly like this. So essentially, the plane will fly in this direction, point in this direction, but the wind will carry it like this. So the plane will actually fly like that. Okay, so that's the key point, is having that drawn. Now, do we know some of the angles? And the answer is yes, we know at least one of them. We know that this is a 45 degree angle because the wind blows from the southeast towards the northwest, so we know the angle must therefore be 45 degrees, but that's the only angle we know. But we know that when we start here and we end there, the amount of distance covered in the next direction by the wind and by the plane must be the same. Or the velocity components of the two must be the same. So we could say that the velocity in the x-direction of the wind must equal the velocity in the x-direction of the plane. And so we can say that if we then draw the components, sometimes it helps to draw the components. So here we have what we would call the velocity of the wind in the x-direction. Here we have the velocity of the wind in the y-direction. And if we do the same for the plane, notice here, this will be the velocity of the plane in the y direction, and here you can see that this will be the velocity of the plane in the x direction. And notice that these two must equal, they must be equal to each other, because otherwise we can't end up in the position directly, directly south, due south of our starting point. So the velocity in the x direction of the wind, that will be equal to the velocity of the wind, times the cosine of 45 degrees, and that must be equal to, now notice I'm going to use this angle right here, let's call this angle, hmm, let's call it alpha. That's gamma. Say, sorry, gamma, yeah, gamma. Alpha is the sideways, but that's good. I'll take, I like gamma. All right, and so that will be equal to velocity of the plane times d, and now of course we're looking for this here, which is opposite of the angle, that would be the sine of gamma. Solving that for sine of gamma, that gives us the sine of gamma is equal to the velocity of the wind divide, divided by the velocity of the plane times the cosine of 45 degrees. 
and therefore we know that gamma is equal to the inverse sine of velocity of the wind, that would be 30, velocity of the plane, I believe was 80, and times the cosine of 45 degrees, and so gamma equals, and I have a calculator hiding here somewhere, yep, there we go. So we have 3 divided by 8 times the cosine of 45 degrees, and take the inverse sine of that, and we get 16.377 degrees. 15.377 degrees. 15.377 degrees. I just kept a few extra decimal places so I don't have a Randolph error. So essentially we could say gamma equals 15.4 degrees. There we go. And I believe that answers question A, what is the direction of the plane? Or that the plane must fly? And so therefore we could say that uh, gamma is equal to 15.4 degrees. And now we can say that it's east of south. So it's not directly south, but that many degrees east of south. So we can say east of south. And that would be the answer for part A. Now the question is, if the distance is 200 kilometers, how long will it take for the plane to get to its destination? Hmm. So what we need to do is we need to figure out what the velocity of r is. So we need to do again a vector sum. V sub r, V sub r is going to be equal to the y component of, of the velocity of the plane, so it would be the velocity of the plane in the y direction, minus, because notice the component of the wind will be in the opposite direction, minus the velocity of the wind in the y direction, so it's going to be the difference between those two, and that will be the magnitude of the resultant velocity. So it means that the resultant velocity will be equal to the velocity of the plane, which is 80 meters per second, times, now since we're looking for the y direction, so be careful, this belongs to this vector right there, so we're looking for this vector right here, it's going to be the adjacent side to the angle, so that's going to be the cosine of 15.377 uh, degrees, that's why I keep a few extra decimal places, not to have a, an error there, minus the velocity of the wind, 30, and here we're looking for this component, and notice that was the angle, we're looking for the opposite side, so that would be the sine of 45 degrees, although with 45 degrees it doesn't matter. There we go, and that will give us the effective velocity of the plane in the y direction, the resultant velocity. So in this case, that would be equal to, take the uh, cosine of that, times 80, that gives us 77.14, 77.14 meters per second, minus, we get 45, so minus 45, take the cosine or sine of that sine, times 30, that would be 21.21, 21.21, and so that would be equal to 55.9 meters per second. So that will be the resultant velocity of the plane flying somewhat against the wind. Now we need to know what the time is that it will take to travel there. Now notice we have the, the velocity in meters per second. The conversion to kilometers per second is 3.6. So we can say that velocity... Um, of the resultant is going to be 55.9 meters per second. The conversion into kilometers per hour is going to be 3.6 3 over 1. So multiply this times, times 3.6 and we get 201.3 kilometers per hour. That's the resultant velocity. And then of course you can figure out the time you know that distance equals velocity times time, so time equals distance divided by velocity, so that's 200 kilometers divided by 201.3 kilometers per hour, so it looks like it's just about an hour, and so that would be 0 0.993 hours would be the time, which is just slightly less than a full hour for the plane to get there. 
And so that's how it's done. That's how we do relative velocities. The key always is to draw a vector diagram representing the velocities. Take each of the velocities and, and find the x and y components. So here's the x and y component of the velocity of the plane, x and y component of the velocity of the wind. Then you realize that in the x direction, since the plane wants to fly due south, that those two components must be equal. So once you have that, you can find the second angle, the angle of gamma. And once you have that angle, you then plug it in here. You then do a component addition in the y direction for the velocity of the resultant, and out pops the final answer. And that is how it's done. So you think it's an interesting question? It definitely shows us an interesting way of solving a problem like that. So here it is.